So I was recently recommended you check out one of Jordan's recent videos. Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to talk about something which I've wanted to talk about for ages, but it is a very nuanced and quite a touchy subject. And it is the debate of, is plastic surgery feminist? Look, Botox is just something that people can pay for. And that's it. That's all it is. It's something in the market. It's your choice. What you want to do. Nobody can stick a, a a label on something. And say you you have to you know be a feminist. Oh, this is for non-feminists or whatever. It's it's for people in general. What's that got to do with the price of cheese? <laughs> you know, today I'm going to be discussing whether it's empowering to all women or whether it's just self-empowering. Whether it's self-empowering at all. Getting cosmetic procedures to adhere to beauty standards. I wouldn't you say that sentence taught today we oh well this is something that has to do with feminism it's somebody that's just no feeling that great about themselves for whatever particular reason or an accident it's just there's no label to it it's just whether somebody agrees with it or no that's it this is an amazing book and if you are somebody that obviously suffers from you know these problems you know whether you know you've got an issue regarding your self appearance and that back in 2017 i was recommended to get this book because obviously i was really down i wasn't feeling good at all my friend recommended me this book and it's arguably the best book that i've ever read the reason being is because of the information that's in it it's just so powerful of course you've got to try and put any practice as well really all it comes down to it's a bit like in this book the example of the guy with the scar in his face it's just a mental block that he you know filled his own head with that's all it comes down to that even if it isn't based on truth if you convince yourself it's true you're gonna hurt for it how you actually fix your problems is actually something in there rather than the external don't get me wrong these things can help with that but sometimes if you get something done you still feel the same way of course it's something to do with what's internal beauty standards and capitalism choice feminism all of that good stuff and i do just want to disclaim that as i am debating the topic of whether plastic surgery is feminist or not i am not talking about plastic surgery in relation to gender transitioning or gender reassignment facial feminization surgery any type of surgery which helps alleviate dysphoria or surgery which is used to help people transition i'm not talking about that as we all know plastic surgery has been around for years and i'd say it's probably most popular and mainstream within the last 20 years rhinoplasty has always been fairly popular boob jobs were extremely popular in the early 2000s and the late 90s and they're still popular now and one of the most popular sort of new procedures now is a bbl which is a brazilian bum lift which is basically when you get all of of the fat in your back I believe and like other areas put into your ass. Now you can see where this is kind of gone where the whole thing fitting in capitalism of course the anti-capitalist rhetoric using the whole thing to do with the advertising I can understand that you know through all the adverts they use to a certain extent sometimes false advertising where you know by the 1970s they started introducing all the sexual imagery and stuff like that in order to try and sell whatever products it is making people feel bad about themselves oh this is how you're supposed to look in other words what i'm saying is don't you to just ignore all this you know nonsense they fill these magazines with a lot of false stuff because these models like i say they're all photoshopped to some extent they don't put them in the magazines if they're not uh, so when you see you know their face looks as if it's symmetrical that's because it is that's, li that's literally because they've photoshopped that nobody is is perfect even day all the skin jobs and everything and they you know <laughs> they, they even enlarge the eye slightly now, all that stuff and en and en enlarge the neck by raising the neck and if it's no that it's something to do with our you know boobs or something they and have even <laughs> it's quite funny these instagram models the littered filled way i hate to use this word but i'm sorry i have to use it it's narcissism going to the lengths of actually editing their images because they feel so unhappy about themselves you know you could blame social media for this type of stuff because social media has been known for people comparing themselves to other folk i think there's more to it than just advertising to be honest with you i think there's a, a problem in society alone in of itself and this video is coming from the perspective of someone who has had work done. I've had Botox in my eyebrows, I've had filler in my chin, I've had nearly three mils of filler in my lips over the last two years. So obviously I don't judge anybody who gets work done.
I feel like Ariana Grande with this jumper on. Yeah. Hello, hi, sorry, just popping in here quickly. Just letting you guys know that this video is gonna have quite a lack of visuals. I know that a lot of you guys like the visuals because it keeps you engaged, but obviously the topic is plastic surgery and filler. So first of all, just wow, the difference, right? What she looks like there to what she looks like when she's just caked with the makeup. But she just doesn't even look the same person. And without the makeup, she actually, in my opinion, looks so much better without it. No, it's just it's something I just find absolutely remarkable there she was she was saying stuff that obviously she get botox done and stuff like that before i get into the debate of whether plastic surgery is feminist or not i think we need to talk about plastic surgery itself one thing which has really changed about plastic surgery and cosmetic procedures in the last 20 to 30 years is not only have they become more accessible but they've also become a lot more i hate this word by the way normalized many plastic surgeons will offer payment plans to pay off expensive procedures such as rhinoplasty which can run you up anything to 10 grand. Now obviously I can understand why the market's changed and there's a greater demand for all this type of stuff because of the way the market's changed and I kind of blame the mainstream media, I kind of blame the entertainment industry especially and I wouldn't say that's blame for you know today with capitalism. I think it's really just a case that it's actually anti-market. Where I'm coming from by that is the fact that when you're pro-market, it's don't you consumers demand what consumers want. But these celebrities, to a certain extent, because they're so idolised and whatever, they kind of get away with manipulating because of the, you know, who rules over the entertainment industry. In fact, I, th I think that's why so many people are turning against you know, the celebrities and whatever. Not just for other reasons relative to what you hear about pedophilia and stuff like that. The image that these celebrities are putting out there, they're not even suitable for children. I mean, they're, you know, hyper-sexualised and everything where they wear scantily clothing and everything they start acting like absolute tramps. And these are, you know, your famous singers and I don't even pay too much attention to be honest with you, because I don't watch most of it. Of course, it passes off that influence onto the younger ones. Again, it goes into these stuff to do with the magazines, all the adverts and everything. They, this is what they think, you know, people should look like. And it's no wonder that people end up you know, going down the road of feeling down about themselves, they end up going through a, a phase of, let's just say, anorexia and, and whatever, and they, they throw themselves up to try and, you know, make themselves feel better about how they look and whatever. Yeah, I find that very, very sad, and I wouldn't be slow in reminding anybody like that that they don't need to do it you know, all that stuff. That what you see in these magazines and everything, it's all fake. You see it from time to time with the clothes and that and how they're acting and stuff like that. I mean, you honestly try to tell me that these parents and that uh, are basically in encouraging and supporting what they see with these celebrities and stuff like that. I don't believe that for a second. Now, of course, plastic surgery is still fairly taboo. People do still judge women who get work done, which is why a lot of people try to hide it or try to keep it a secret, but I'll elaborate more on this later and i think it's fairly obvious that most people get work done to adhere to the current beauty standards and i know that some of us may feel like we're getting it done for ourselves because it's making us feel good and that we have no outside influences but once you realize how much beauty standards are in everything and how much they affect everyone then you realize that most people get work done to adhere to these beauty standards so i acknowledge the fact that there is a problem of obviously with regards to the thing and you could bring in the word narcissism and stuff like that but namely social media where folk are comparing themselves to each other things like instagram and that where it's literally caked we are these models craving attention this type of stuff that you think to yourself how the hell did this person end up on Instagram? They're literally wearing like next to nothing you think to yourself right that that just really says everything Beauty standards can be defined as the individual qualifications women are expected to meet in order to embody their feminine beauty ideal and thus succeed personally and professionally. There are beauty standards for men, don't get me wrong, but beauty standards for women are a lot more harsh and a lot more severe and when we're talking about the plastic surgery feminism debate, I am talking about women's beauty standards. So again, it's this thing where they bring in the word capitalism and everything to do with the patriarchy and all the rest of this nonsense. Nobody forces you 
at the end. It's doing to you in responsibility. You know, it's all about finding how you can make yourself happy and you need to look within yourself in order to do that. That's more powerful than any drugs. I wouldn't take drugs. Knowledge is something more powerful than any of that. And that's why, you know, I turn to stuff that actually helps and it's all about how you reframe the mind. If you think negatively you will literally feel negative and if you think positively you will feel it. But it does mention that if you're getting any sort of negative thoughts on that, you have to sit and question yourself. Is there any truth to any of that? Well the answer is no, there isn't. If you haven't got any proof of any of the negative stuff you've told yourself, then you have to fight and reject that. You know, you gone and doing whatever it is, or you paying for Botox or whatever it may be, that's your choice. I'm not saying that if you, if you feel unhappy about something, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do something about it or that, and you shouldn't work towards goals, that's another thing, of course, it mentions is obviously we're goal-striving people, and you should obviously work towards goals to improve yourself and that. I mean, this whole thing to make it out as if, oh well, capitalism's a problem, you know, see if other folk do stuff, that's up to them. See if I followed the crowd, I wouldn't be in favour of capitalism. <laughs> that's the truth. That's the God's honest truth. I'm in the minority. I live in a country that is literally rancid with people who support you know, and sympathise with socialism to some extent or another. See it all over, even, see the MGTOW movement and everything, that, that's another movement that's just as negative as the feminist movement. Folk, honestly, are like sheep. Folk tend to follow these trendy movements of, oh, this is what, the, it means to be this and it means to be that. It's like, I just think to myself, you know something, I just go my own direction. I go and do my own, you know, specific thing. I live by my own standards and I don't go by anybody else. Society standards, I mean who cares what society standards are? And beauty standards change very similar to how trends change. There's very much a trend cycle when it comes to beauty standards. The key word there is obviously trends based upon how they dress and all the rest of that sort of stuff. And But my advice to anybody is just don't get caught up and pressurised just because other folk think that this is what the, the fashion thing is supposed to be about. Like, who cares what other folk think? I think no matter how beautiful you are, no matter how rich you are, everyone is a victim to patriarchal beauty standards in one way or another. But one thing which I think is important to recognise is that some people are affected by these beauty standards a lot more than other people, mostly marginalised groups. One example of this is shaming someone because they're skinny, a horrible thing to do. Yes, of course it is. But is it comparable to fat phobia, which often involves blatant discrimination, oppression, and has racist origins? No, it's not the same as fat phobia because of those reasons. So what I would typically say where you're going to get a lot of folk judging one another is common through society, but where you're really going to find this, where you have to live up to so-called standards, stems from a lot of these nationalist sort of populist movements and whatever. They think that the standards Standards have to meet, you know, one group. An individualist like myself, who is strongly in favour of live and let live, I don't care what you want today. You choose to be who you are, that's that. I don't care about those type of things, I'll judge you, don't you, your character. Just this thing where they just love to just blame capitalism and that's that. So the argument in both sides. I can agree to a varying extent when it comes to these feminists that a number of them do think that along the lines that things should fall on a plate for them. You know, you need to be able to be willing to help yourself to a varying extent and improve your health and you can't force people to be attracted to you. Sometimes in life you have to self-reflect. The whole thing on the other side of it, I don't agree with the populists because it's typically where it stems from. Not all the time. You get those who judge and fat shame and whatever. I don't believe they're a help at all. You're not going to help somebody by belittling them. And I see that a lot. You're not going to help them at all. How you actually go about achieving something to help somebody, to make them want to do something, is showing them deep down that you actually genuinely care about them. And I don't mean caring about them in a way that you fucking start running them down. I don't know why people seem to think that's, oh, that, that, that's my way of showing I care about someday. Like I said with the feminists, and I have seen, you know, blog posts and whatever posted before in the past, there's this mentality today, again, relative to the socialist mentality of thinking meritocracy 
is out the door and that you can just expect things to fall on the plate for you. And the reason these beauty standards exist is not only because it upholds white supremacist beauty ideals and because of the patriarchy, but it's also because of capitalism. Oh, here we go. It's this thing where, again, capitalism gets brought in here and then, of course, as if by magic, it somehow becomes correlative to the word, you know, white supremacy. Capitalism is an individualist system. It breeds that individual mentality. White supremacy breeds the collective mentality. In other words, it's inherently a very socialist mentality. You know, in the mentality and the mindset of a socialist, socialists look for grievances in absolutely everything. And in the mentality of these socialists, they think that everybody who opposes socialism must be a white supremacist. And that's exactly why there's a serious problem with these people. Let me tell you why. You cannot avoid totalitarianism with socialism. You cannot. Once you reach the dictatorship, these people would justify your death based upon the fact that you support capitalism. Why? Because they've already correlated you with white supremacy. There you go. That's why in history, time and 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 time again always leads to mass graves. Always. They don't understand history and that's what it comes down to, folks. Oh, you support capitalism, therefore you're a Nazi. Oh, you support capitalism, therefore you're a white supremacist. Insecurity makes money. And this is why beauty standards are constantly evolving and changing because companies want to keep on making money. You have to love absolutely love socialists and their mentality where they love to sit and pretend to you that socialism is not present in today's economy as if to say you're living under late stage capitalism as if to say socialism's just not present at all in this mixed economy and that socialism has nothing to do with it well, it's, it's not it's not socialism's fault not socialism, but it's all big bad evil capitalism. Unfortunately, this is the mentality that you get. There are so many things you can do nowadays to change your appearance. You can get filler, you can get Botox, you can get plastic surgery, boob job, rhinoplasty, you can get waxing, threading, do your hair. Or, thanks to capitalism, you have the freedom of choice. Now, when it comes to socialism, you don't have choice. What you have is life like Venezuelan people, trying to find any scraps left in the shelves. And if you can't find any, then you'll be rummaging through the bins on the streets. And just through my option, thanks to capitalism and having something like this available, because of this knowledge and us being goal striving people, I, for a period, had lost weight. And I found that because I did it so quick, there was still something there lingering causing me pain. And it made me realise that, well, it isn't entirely to do with my weight. I felt good about myself to a varying extent, but I found that, you know, I ended up putting weight back on, yet I felt stronger. I felt at least to a varying extent better, to some extent. And that's only because I still had that goal in mind. And what that teaches you is the fact that when you have a goal for something, you feel worth. When you lose sight of a goal, you feel depressed. I was obviously going to the gym, lifting weights and stuff like that, helping myself in terms of my weight, losing weight and whatever. The reason why I explain this is because you're trying to blame capitalism. Well, there you go. It was capitalism that produced that and those other books that you benefit from. And knowledge. So capitalism is all about putting options in front of you. No one sticks a gun to your head and says that you have to do a particular given thing. How about taking other means? Again, it's just this thing where it's just so easy just to pinpoint and blame capitalism for absolutely everything. The beauty industry is a billion pound industry, which mostly makes money out of people's insecurities. And the way it works, the way a lot of very big corporations make money out of people's insecurities is basically telling people that their completely normal features of their face and body are wrong and they need to be fixed. They try to use that by today's standards, but today's you know, take for example with regards to healthcare. Today's American healthcare, for example, isn't even capitalist. And that's because what you've got is a very corporatist model. 
this anti-consumerist, this all for the sake of the big corporations that seek to exploit the market and exploit, you know, that of consumers and they can get away with it because of a government granted monopolised sort of system and it's the same thing with this corporatist system today in other areas of the market. What she completely ignores is the difference between that with the corporatist system to that of a free market economy, in other words a capitalist system. Now that's the difference because in a capitalist system you have fierce competition and it's the consumer that has the freedom to shop around. The consumer is the one that dictates the cheaper cost, the quality of service. In a free market economy, businesses are forced to provide uh, the best service possible based on upholding their reputation because of fierce competition and they don't have government to protect them. And I'm not saying there's something of pure perfection where somebody's being told that they don't look good about themselves. I don't know how true that is, by the way. And I'm not saying that that doesn't exist today, but what you need is healthy competition and I don't believe that exists today. Whether it's wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, under eye circles, discoloration, uneven skin tone, female body hair is another big example. Women were tricked into thinking that razors were a hygiene product rather than a beauty product. Hygiene products are things like deodorant, toothpaste, body wash, hair brushes. Having body hair doesn't make you unhygienic. I don't know about that. I really don't think that the whole thing to do with the body hair, especially if you're talking about somebody that's a lassie, I don't think it came down to that today with the industry itself. For example, these companies would sell products based on consumer demand and I think that demand is and based on standards, you know, whether you agree with it or not, you know, a lot of guys would not find it attractive for women to have, you know, that for whatever reason being. And because of that, the market's going to react to that. So businesses are obviously going to sell products in relation to that. And they have to advertise in order to sell that. I really don't see the whole thing being entirely to blame on things like advertising and whatever. And companies are only going to sell what is obviously in demand of. It all comes down to this thing where, like I said before, about identity politics, they're always playing this game. You support the private sector, therefore you're a Nazi. They, you support the private sector, therefore, because you support capitalism, you're a white supremacist. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you, you support capitalism, therefore, you, you're Adolf Hitler. It's like, even although Adolf Hitler was, of course, a socialist, but <laughs> we we'll ignore that fact. And even although the white supremacists were bloody socialists, but we'll just choose to ignore that fact. <laughs> but you've got to love the sheer hypocrisy of them. They are sitting there living the luxury of what capitalism has produced for them. Such as sitting using their smartphones, using their computers, wearing all their fancy clothing, having all the fancy jewellery that they have, and having all the luxuries such as the cameras that they bought in order to record their own videos. <laughs> and then after all of that, they <laughs> then diss capitalism. And the funny thing is, is because when they oppose capitalism, the inevitable consequence is they end up like Venezuela. And then when they get the true face of socialism, they then say that that, that wasn't that, that that wasn't true socialism. <laughs> that wasn't true socialism. It just, it just, it just it wasn't socialism at all. <laughs> You can't teach these people. It's like, yeah, folk. I, I don't know what you've got to say on the entire issue, right? I don't. I don't even know what the whole thing to do with the uh, Botox and everything has got to do with feminism, anyway. Like I says earlier on. So, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like the video, be sure to like it, share the video, and whatever. And of course, thank you for watching. And I hope you've taken something for it. Righty, cheers.